seeing none, we go uh, now to welcome to Tony Bates, the interim program director. The hell you say? Sure, 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 sure. Take a mic. No, I'm good. You can hear me. Um, not much to report, really. Um, no, I'd rather not be on camera. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, you know, there is plenty to do in programming. Uh, we have no, no. I really don't want to be on camera. No, seriously. Don't want to be on camera. I don't give a shit. I don't want that camera. Okay. Um, anyway, you can you have my voice. Yeah, point it that way. Oh, we'll get William. We'll get listen, William. listen, listen. Let's just move on. So there, there's much to do basically in programming. We have made a few programming changes. I've heard some of folks' concerns, uh, most specifically about uh, the 9 a.m. strip of programming. I find that programming to be pretty good. I am not in favor of all of the positions held by the folks that uh, are in that time slot, but I believe what folks fail to understand often is that we have to be a business as well as an information outlet. And one of, our ma one of the major flaws that I saw when I arrived was that our ratings simply dive after Amy Goodman is off the air. And so I decided to bring in programming that I thought would appeal very specifically to her audience. <coughs> I have received numerous letters from listeners complimenting those choices in the 9 o'clock lineup. <coughs> um, I diverge greatly with the person who has drawn the most fire, Ian Masters, mm -hmm. in terms of politics. Uh, the, the man has attacked me personally on the air, has called me out many times, has... Um, his politics are very much right of my own. However, he has a specific appeal to a specific audience that we have lost. And my idea was to try and recapture that audience, and I believe that we've done that to some degree. Um, I don't agree with him wholeheartedly, but I would, uh, I very much understand the need for us to begin to rebuild audience, and that's the purpose of that stream. I think that we have to continue to do that um, in other areas. The issue there is that this requires a major shifting, obviously, of the grid. Hmm. Um, I, am, I am convinced that we need some more, a little bit more of a focus on some arts programming in order to draw in a younger crowd. I don't believe that we're going to have a younger audience until we focus a little bit more on arts and have, uh, it's the only way really to get young people to listen to our station when they hear programming that's good that they can relate to they will continue to listen i had the experience myself when i discovered a pacifica station i went there to listen to music for instance and stayed around for other things when i found that uh, there were politics and such so what my goal is to do is to kind of slowly change things around not necessarily changing programmers but changing the quilt that we have. We have a patchwork quilt grid that doesn't fit together, doesn't slide together well, programs don't flow into each other. So my first goal is to take what we have that's good and to kind of put it in a place where the programming fits together so that it makes sense to the listener. So that you aren't listening to one thing one minute, you know, you, you know, you're listening to whatever one minute and the next minute makes no sense whatsoever that audience wouldn't continue to listen. In some places you can't avoid that, obviously. Right. But for the most part, there are ways to change the grid around where the programming makes sense together. It is my intention to do, to do that. It is also my intention to find a way to speak to folks who are in college um, in their late 20s and 30s as well. I believe that's the audience that we're really missing. When, when we say youth and we talk about college students and high school students, we're really talking about uh, an audience that can't support the station financially altogether. It's an audience that we must reach to build, but when we're talking about reaching younger folks, I mean, our average age listener is around 56, I believe, or 63. Our average age, so if we had 40 year olds listening, it's an improvement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously. And I find that, uh, that our programming is often 
um, mired in dialogue that is that has passed those generations, and it's one of the reasons that they're not listening to us. We have to find ways to reach out, or I have to find ways at least, to reach out and to have programming that really appeals. And I can't say enough again that if we start by improving our arts programming, then we will begin to get folks who are tuning in to be entertained. I also believe that we have forgotten that we are an entertainment outlet as well as an information outlet. A program either needs to be entertaining or engaging. If it isn't either, it's not going to have very many listeners. Um, Ian Masters, for instance, who is entertaining because he's engaging and because he knows what he's talking about. The man has a huge brain. He's incredibly engaging. I do not agree with his politics for the most part, but the show isn't for me. What I understand is I cannot program for me. It isn't about me. I must program to bring audience to WBAI. And so despite the fact that I disagree with many of his stances and many of his politics, I know that there's a huge portion of our audience, better still, there's a huge portion of Amy Goodman's audience who will continue to listen to us because that show follows. Um, at first when I began to receive letters, I, began to, I threw them away, uh, complimenting those programs because I didn't think them important. I, at the beginning, I got very many and I wish that I had saved them and brought them here. I still have a few. Um, I certainly have some complaint letters as well. They aren't all good, but the majority of them have been, I mean, actually overwhelmingly, from the listening audience, they have been complimentary of those programs. Um, and I, I think it speaks to who our audience is. I think that sometimes, as a group, we forget that we are unique folks, those of us who are in governance, those of us who work at the station. We are not the whole of the audience, and we sometimes think of ourselves as that. We simply aren't. We can't program just to suit our needs. Free speech means sometimes there are going to be points of view that we don't agree with. That's the reality of free speech. If you really believe in free speech, if you really believe in the Pacifica mission, you have to understand that there will be things that push your buttons and that you don't agree with. Um, I don't believe that those things should be opposed, diametrically opposed to our mission necessarily, that's when we get into an area that we certainly have to be careful, but I believe that it is okay. So uh, my plan really is to, to begin by finding ways, again, to shift programming that works together, to support the arts programming a little bit more as a basis. But the other thing that you have to understand, folks, is the daily reality of working in a radio station having to deal with the day-to-day -day work creates, uh, Bertold and I are constantly putting out fires, sometimes created by this body, sometimes created other ways, that take us away from the ability to do that work, to put into motion the things that we want to do. I have wanted to shift the grid around for some time. The other major obstacle is that fund drives are coming so fast and furiously now. <coughs> My time is often focused on fund drives inhibiting my ability to address the real issues that are my job. It's a reality of the situation. It's something that you must consider when you're thinking about how the station is moving and how it works. Even uh, as Bertold is new there, he has come to me several times just this week to say, I can't believe how much important stuff I have to do while I'm working on menial tasks instead. It's the nature of what we do. And um, again, the, the fund drive, we have had a fund drive for each of the last, every two months. We have another in October, mm. giving us no time to plan in between, really, or giving us little time to plan, giving us little time to procure premiums, and giving us little time to do anything else. So while I am bent on beginning to change programming at the station, to do it comprehensively, to do it properly, I have to have time to focus on those tasks. And as I am taken away by my daily requirements of my job, yeah. it affects my ability to do so. Um, that's it for me, pretty much. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, Russell. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Work? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a couple of questions. Yes, yes sir. Um, um, you said that there's 
evidence that you're recapturing an audience that was lost with um, old masters? No, I didn't say that. Oh, what did you say? I said I believe that we will recapture. No, you said that there's already some evidence that we're starting to do that. You did say that. No, I said that I've received letter. I don't have any evidence that we've begun to recapture audience. Mm -hmm. If I said that, I misspoke. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll play the tape later on. The other thing I wanted to ask you um, was um, you seem to. Uh, com are you complaining now that. Louder, um, please. I'm sorry. Is this working? I just. Share your voice. Good yes. Okay, so um, you you're complaining that um, you 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 have to spend a lot of time on your um, fund drive responsibilities. Yet you um, repeat over and 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 over again um, the same premiums, uh, the same recorded. <coughs> people and the quality of these <coughs> pitching um, half hours and hours uh, has declined quite a bit and I wonder what do you mean by the quality has declined I don't understand well you have Kevin Trudeau a huckster who's a liar and if we sincerely believed in what he was pitching, how to make a million dollars, why don't we use it to make a million dollars to the station each punch drive instead of <laughs> pitching this ridiculous, absolutely insulting. My first response will be that I think it's local I, I, programmer so brought that to us, not me. I'm in the middle of my sentence. I didn't know that he wasn't finished, he stopped talking. Well, when I said, uh, let me finish, I was, I was already talking. So, so the thing is, Kevin Trudeau is an example. The Illuminati garbage is another example. Um, the um, homophobe Cass Ingram, okay, who's used to at least keep his homophobia secret, um, is repeated over and over again. When Scott is repeated, repeated over and over again. It's, it's it, it, you know, the curing cancer from the inside is repeated over and over again. Uh, what's his name, Anderson? Um, it's really hard to understand why you're complaining about um, you're having to spend so much time on fund drive responsibilities when, in fact, the same stuff gets done every fund drive over and over and over and over and over and over Every again. question where the lecture found out that he was a homophobe, we stopped using him. That was a couple of weeks ago. Somebody sent me an email explaining that indeed there was some homophobic writing. I read it. I went to Kathy and said just this week, what did I tell you, Kathy? No more cash anger in one Exactly. Um, what, what did he exactly say? Because we shouldn't judge him just... No, it's vile. He said something it's vile. It's, it's vile. It's Does, does he admit to it? Or he did no, it's written in his book. It's in his written book. in his book. Oh, thank but he was here before, well before I came. Right, Kevin Trudeau, I right. did not bring to the station. A local but programmer did. Over, but absolutely. Um, what was the other thing? Gwen Scott is the best fun drive show that I've ever heard. And it yeah, will repeat. It's successful. It raised probably $40,000 just this week alone. And so it will continue to play. It raised 40000 of our dollars this week, probably, maybe more. Um, so as long as that is successful, we will continue to use it. Whatever is successful, we will continue to use. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. I know what, what, problem I, what I would. What I would. And I don't remember the other thing you said, but uh, Seth, you had a question. Wait, sure. no. Or I don't call on people. Uh, Seth, Jennifer, Alex, and Kathy. He said something about his time. He said that he was using all of his time is on fundraising. So. His question is about the time. Okay. I, I'm going to follow up with Russell's question. So, um, Here's your microphone. Yes, I, <laughs> you never you know, I'm, I'm going to follow up with Russell's question because uh, coming from uh, 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 not such a different place, I, I also feel uh, sort of ashamed when I hear some yeah. of the things that are pitched. And, um, and so let me focus a little on the, uh, the health one. 